This is a tutorial for the Cut UV Seams, Cut Selection and Delete Selection tools of my cloth sewing toolbox you can find on Gumroad and Blender Market. The goal of those three tools is to add procedural cutting and deleting operations after a simulation, allowing your mesh to be simulated in a different way than its cosmetic appearance. So for the example of the cap that I am using to demo the add-on, we will be using the Delete Selection tool to remove the back part of the cap where there is the strap so that the simulation is still simulating everything as a full and closed cap which wouldn't be the case if we just deleted the back part which wouldn't be the case if we just deleted the back part in edit mode and here the Delete Selection tool will be different than just using a mask modifier because it also creates a new attribute for the newly created edge on which we'll also be able to add some other details then the cut selection tool will be used to cut the front part of the cap from the rest and also this is different than some other split modifier because it will create different attributes for either side of the cut and this is also used on the cap for the different lines on which I want to create seams which will be cosmetically joining two different panels together and the cut UV seams generally does about the same but without creating new attributes but it does so to follow the different UV islands that are created in your UV map. So in my case, this is just a single mesh island, but we have different UV islands, so the tool will separate everything. Now to use the asset pack, you can put it in your file path for the asset browser, because every tool are marked as asset, and then make sure to use the link import method, so that you will be able to use new versions of the toolbox when they are out. So now let's start with the cut UV seams. Here I just dragged it onto my mesh, and you can right away see the effect. The main parameter here is the name of your UV map. In my case, I have two UV maps, but I will begin to use the first one, which is just called UV map, and it is conveniently the default name. But if you use a mesh for, for example, Houdini, you might have to use the name UV, which comes from the Houdini naming convention. Then to make sure everything has been cut correctly, you can check unwrap to see that the projected version of your mesh does indeed match the one that you have in your UV space. And here, if you need to animate this, I also added an unwrap factor, which can look kind of cool. Now for the last parameter, I need to explain how this works a bit further. So basically, as you can see on my mesh, on the front part, my tool creates a cut, even though when I see in edit mode, I don't have a UV seam at this place. Because the tool doesn't exactly cut the mesh along the UV seam that you mark in edit mode. If you press U and mark seam, the tool actually compares the value of the UV map attribute on either side of an edge. And for this comparison, we need an epsilon value to check if it is within a certain range. And if this value differs from a value more than the epsilon, we will do a cut at this point. If you want more information about this tool, I created a full tutorial where I'm creating everything and explaining everything a bit further. So now if I apply this tool, for example, if I go into edit mode and press L to select all the linked part, you will be able to see that this tool has indeed cut everything depending on the UV islands. Now let's move on to the delete selection tool. This one is also pretty simple. I'm just going to drag it on my mesh. Here it has just selected everything. So let's uncheck this. And here I will also need a selection. So here I already have a few attributes on my cap. But in this case, I will just want to remove the back part, which I already stored in the back hole attribute. Now, because everything is driven by vertex groups, we can't just select all the faces we, we really want to delete, but we actually need to select the vertices we want to remove. And if you want to check how it will look, it does about the same as deleting those vertices. So even though this selection of vertices is smaller than the selection of faces, it will actually do what we want. So again, this is my selection. And if I select this as an attribute, you can see that it has cosmetically removed those faces, even though the underlying geometry is still the same. And most importantly for this example, if I enable my alambic cache, everything is still simulated correctly and the cap is not deforming where there is this hole. Because in this case, I will also want to instance a strap on the back of the hat, which would still keep the shape of the cap intact. I also added a progress value, which I just used when I created the demo video of the add-on. It is not really useful, but if you want to animate the disappearance of the selection, it can still be useful. And now, most importantly, we have for this tool an output attribute, which is named by default cut edge. And for this, we can have a look in the shader node tree. Let's just create a new material. 
add an attribute node and select the created cut edge attribute. And as you can see, this tool, unlike the mask modifier, created a new attribute on the newly created edge, which can be really useful so that you don't have to go into edit mode and add another vertex group for this edge if you want to add edge details later. And the final tool for this tutorial is the cut selection tool. So to demo this a bit better, I'm just going to remove the two other tools and drag in the cut selection. Here we have a bunch more attributes because this one is a bit more complex. It acts generally the same as the operation done by the UV cut or the delete selection because it will just cut your mesh along a vertex group selection, but it will also try to create some attributes on the two new sides of the mesh. And where this becomes complex is that it is a bit tricky for the geometry node node tree to properly detect the two new sides of the cut. So for example, if I do a cut along those lines, we can easily tell as humans that on one side we will have those faces and the other side we will have those ones. But if the cut does not go all the way through the mesh island, it will be a bit tricky to differentiate between those two faces. So for this I implemented a few methods that I'm going to explain a bit further. So first I'm going to cut the front part of the cap so that with this tool I will be able to have an attribute on the side of the hard part and on the side of the rest of the cap. Here again I already have a vertex group for the selection which I just called visor seam. So let's right away put this as the selection attribute in the modifier. Right away we can see that a cut has been made. Before having a look at the setting for the two sides attribute, let's quickly go over all the parameters. This UV map is just the UV map of the mesh. It is useful on the backend for some computation. The remove corners toggle is used when you have a cut that doesn't go all the way through the mesh islands. So for example, if I do a cut along those vertex group, by default, the vertices that will be on the A side vertices might be this one, this one, this one and this one and the B side will also be the one on the end or the one on this side and again the one on the end. So we'll have the selection duplicated but if you toggle the remove corners or the one on the end will be removed from the two selections. Then we have the side attribute method which can just select between group ID and side markers and the corresponding settings are stored in the two next panels. Finally we have a few output attributes. The first output attribute is the face group ID. For example, here before the modifier, I just have one mesh island. So this mesh island has a group ID of a zero because it is the only one. But after this tool, we'll have maybe a group ID of a zero for this part of the cap and a group ID of one for this part. So this group ID value is stored everywhere on the mesh islands, not just on the seam, and it might be useful for debugging or for using other attributes in the shader node. Then the side A and side B attributes are just boolean values stored on the vertices of the mesh on either side of this newly created edge, depending on the side attribute method selected earlier. And finally, the split UV map creates something that might not be always useful. It is just a UV map that is created automatically in the geometry node node group using the UV unwrap node that just creates an automatic UV map after the two parts of the mesh were separated. And now let's have a look at the side attributes. For this, I will just again go into the shader node, create one attribute node for the A side and another one for the B side. I'm just going to set this to mix between some color value so we can have a look at everything a bit better. So the A side will be in red and the B side in blue. So in this case, the default method for computing the side attributes is group ID. So all of those settings are stored here. Now this example is quite simple because we just have two mesh islands. So depending on the group ID mode, the tool will just compare the side A and side B group ID input right here. And where the values are the same and we are on the newly created vertices, it will set the side A or side B attribute. So for example, in this case, the side A group ID is where the group ID of island indexes correspond to zero and the side B where it is one but we could also invert this selection like this. So if the cut selection tool just created a new mesh island, you might have to tweak the side A and side B group IDs to properly select either side. Here there is also a toggle to set the ID modulo to. So if this is toggled, all the group IDs will just have a value of zero and one, and it might be easier to debug everything. Now let's just change the selection to demo a cut that doesn't go all the way through. So here let's make a cut along this selection 
this is just the group and you can still see the effect of the cut because this creates a crease right here so in this case the island indexes would be useful because we didn't create a new mesh island now we have another method which is path to edge and this basically takes the extremities of the selected cut and tries to connect it to the side of the mesh islands to more easily differentiate one side from the other and from this we can still select the group ideas with those different values and now because the cut doesn't go all the way through we can see the effect of the remove corner toggle which indeed removes the two corners of the selection from the output attributes note that this doesn't change the cut itself and finally let's have a look at the side marker settings because this is yet another method to differentiate between the two different sides so for example let's make a more complex cut I'm just going to manually cut the front of the cap for now and here I want to cut along a selection which I already made again which is panel seams so this is a selection of vertices that go all the way around of the panel of the cap I will just quickly remove the top part with the delete selection tool by selecting the top part which I named mask Okay, so now let's cut along the panel seams and let's and first let's have a look at what is those with the group ID method. In this case, because we have more than two mesh islands, if we don't toggle the set ID modulo 2, we only have one mesh island of index 0 and one of index 1. So we don't have all the information we need. And by toggling this, we can better have all the side A and side B attributes as we would want it to add some details all along those seams. But in this case, all the side A and side B attributes are alternating blue, red, blue, red and so on but what if we want to have one side A here side A here again, B, B and so on this we can do with the side attribute method side marker and this method is a bit easier to understand because for example if you want the side A attributes right here, right here and right here we would just have to create a vertex group with a point on this mesh island on this one and on this one and it will automatically expand the selection to the whole mesh island and use this as a kind of marker to force all the new edges that are near these points as side A attributes and I can demo this really easily if I, can, if I take a look at my markers vertex group here I selected a few points on this new mesh island right here this one and this one as you can see and this will be enough to tell my tool where to put the side A as you can see right here it implements a new way to differentiate between all those new sides so those two can give really different results so depending on your model you might have to experiment a bit with those settings but it can be really useful to automatically create the attributes on both sides so that you can use the rest of the tools such as the seam details and so on which will automatically create seams all along your cuts and as most of the tools of this toolbox this is also really useful when you have a cloth simulation that was made before the fact because you will be able to have for example a mesh second cache before all the modifier and with this you will be able to procedurally create new attributes and make new cuts delete some parts and so on without having to change your core simulation and the general look of the animation of course if you don't need simulation and so on you might as well just go into edit mode make your cuts and select either side to mark them as group attributes as you would want but even in a cloth making workflow which is still inside Blender this is really useful because in this case I was able to simulate my whole cap as a single part without having to use the sewing settings in the shape type of the cloth modifier which allows to make a simulation with different cloth panels because with this we can just simulate everything as one single piece and cut it after the simulation really easily thank you so much for watching if you still have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment so that I will be able to improve the toolbox or the documentation in the future. And see you next time.